How far would you go for some prize money? There have been a lot of things that have been aired on television, some good and a lot bad, but on the bad end, some reality shows take it to a whole nother level. I still love you. The following reality shows actually exist, and when you find out what these people had to do and what was done to them, it's going to make Survivor look like a walk in the park. Here are 10 reality TV shows you won't believe exist. Number 1 is Data Giri. Premiering on June 9th, 2008 in India, Data Giri ran for four seasons and has been called the meanest show on Indian television. Described as a competition that requires physical strength, brains, and raw courage, the show took four ex-students and brought them, metaphorically, back to their first day of college, and it's just ugly. The show is complete with bullies who would torment them and ridicule them for being dumb, and insult their appearance and personalities, and even physically attack them. Every round, someone would be eliminated and then would be forced to eat disgusting meals like maggot aroni and cheese out of a toilet. <sighs> but it was one particular incident that gained the show international attention when a female challenger slapped one of the male contestants, who in turn slapped her back. Unfortunately for him, the crew of the show did not take too kindly to that, and they all rushed the man live on television and beat him on stage in front of all of the cameras. Number two is the 90 day fiance. Getting married is a, you know, kind of a serious thing, so you better be sure you want to spend the rest of your life with that person. And obviously, you're going to take the time during the selection process to pick the right spouse of your choice. Nah, not these guys. Yeah, they got 90 days. The American reality series that premiered on January 12th, 2014 called 90 Day Fiance that aired on TLC involved several foreign people entering the United States on a 90 day visa, which does not quite sound legal. After they received their fiance visa, they were then paired with a potential match, chosen by the producers, and then given the length of their stay to convince that person that they were the right match to marry. During their visit, the potential wives or husbands from overseas had to overcome some pretty big obstacles. These included language barriers with their partner, cultural differences, and the possible disapproval from their family members, which I'm pretty sure was going to be high. Oh, but don't worry, it's even because Americans are sent to foreign countries with the same timeline and goal. Well, this game's just a big pile of nope. Number three is there something about Miriam. Filmed in Britain in 2003 and aired on February 22nd, 2004, There's Something About Miriam was a dating show in the same style as The Bachelorette with a twist. Labeled by critics as the cruelest reality show idea yet, the program had six men competing to be chosen by Miriam, a 21-year-old Mexican model. Yeah, sounds great, except that what the men didn't know was that Miriam was a pre-operative trans woman. Woman. At the end of the season, the winner, Tom Rook, learned the truth about Miriam being born a man and that he'd been lied to. However, he accepted the money and the vacation with her as the prize. But unfortunately, after the taping, Tom, you know, changed his mind a little bit and denied the prize. And not only that, but filed a joint suit against the producers with the five other men. The lawsuit cited a series of crimes committed against the contestants. These included psychological damage, defamation, breach of contract, and sexual assault. The Sky Network that aired this show opted to settle the matter out of court for an unknown amount of money and went ahead with the airing of the show anyway after its delay. Number four is Married at First Sight. Originally aired on July 8th, 2004, Married at First Sight takes six single people, pairs them using advice from relationship experts, and has them meet literally on their wedding day. Without any time to know a thing about each other, the couple say I do and are literally Literally legally married. Next, each couple spends their first night in a hotel, goes on a honeymoon, and then spends six weeks living together. At the end of the bizarre journey, they get to decide if they want to stay married or get divorced. Well, sure does speed up the whole settling down part of life, doesn't it? The show is based off a television show of the same name from Denmark, so if you think this show is messed up, you can thank the Danes. But what's possibly most surprising is that, believe it or not, four of the show's 12 couples are still married, with five Five of the couples rejecting the marriage at the end of the six weeks, and three couples accepting the marriage only to be divorced later on. Man, you don't play with marriage like that. That's a sacred institution. It goes against my beliefs and... Uh-oh. 
My triggers. <laughs> Number five is Hurl. Aired in the US between July 16th and September 19th of 2008, Hurl was an obstacle course mixed with a competitive eating contest. Five players sit down and eat a mountain of food, and that's where it gets interesting. The first two to, well, Hurl, are disqualified, and the remaining three contestants move on to compete in high energy activities, including spinning and running around quickly. Two more similar rounds occur until there is just one winner who clearly must have hated themselves by that point for ever wanting to compete at all. Yeah, I won, but oh, mama. So you might be wondering, what was the coveted prize that everyone was willing to experience extreme discomfort and possibly vomit for? Oh, well, it was a thousand dollars. A thousand dollar cash prize. That's it. To add to the gross, if a player manages to swallow their you know, without spewing any of it, they get to stay in the game. In the end, the show only ran for 11 episodes. I wonder why! The show is nasty, I wanna move on, make me all gag. <laughs> Number six is Ready for Marriage. Though this reality show is definitely bizarre and a bit sexist to many people, at least the producers' hearts were kind of in the right place. Huh? Airing on Movie TV, a private television station in Zambia, one of the world's poorest countries, Ready for Marriage, or R4M for short, is a 16 week long competitive program which takes 18 women who work in the sex trade industry and teaches them how to be regular girls. The teachings include cooking, cleaning, and overall how to be a good wife to someone. The, uh, well, lucky lady gets $9,000 in an all expense paid wedding. Now, R4M has received its fair share of controversy, as you may have guessed, mostly for the way that they explain a woman should act. But apparently, many women who participated appreciated the help turning their lives around. Of course, they may have appreciated it even more if they were actually taught a skilled trade in a professional occupation in order to get a decent job and earn financial independence. But hey, it's the thought that counts, right? <laughs> Number seven is bridal plasty. Many brides like to change the way that they look before their big day through dieting, exercising, and maybe even dyeing their hair color. But E! Network's unbelievable reality show Bridal Plasty took things so, so much further. On this competition program, 12 contestants who were either soon to be brides or recently married wives, some with kids already, competed to be the perfect bride and ultimately win a dream wedding and a complete plastic surgery makeover. Each week, one woman is sent home in a public voting session amongst the contestants after they participate in a series of elimination challenges. The winners of each challenge receive a ceremonial syringe as their prize, excluding them from the weekly elimination vote. The remaining women who survived the voting process process, receive a cosmetic enhancement from their wish list. And so on and so on, the cycle continues until there's only one bride left. But the kicker of the whole thing, which is really disturbing, is that her fiance or husband doesn't get to see what she looks like until it's all done and he gets to lift the veil. That's risky business, especially if you're already married. You might be lifting the veil to look right at Shrek. Number eight is prize contest life. If you like The Truman Show, you might just love the real thing. Though, spoiler alert, instead of Jim Carrey, it's a naked man who doesn't know he's being live streamed. Running from 1998 until 2002, this Japanese program took the term reality TV to a whole nother level. Nasubi, a Japanese comedian, won a lottery at an audition for a job in show business. But unbeknownst to him, the job was actually a reality TV show challenge to win 1 million yen solely in mailed in sweepstakes from magazines and radio ads. He was taken to a tiny apartment and told to remove all of his clothes. It was there that he agreed to spend time completing the challenge all by himself while he went about his daily routine completely naked. In order to survive, he used a phone, a radio, and postcards to win various sweepstakes which provided him with food and other needed items such as toilet paper. In addition to winning the items to literally not starve, the value of each item went towards his 1 million yen goal. Oh man, this is just cringy. As if that wasn't enough, another thing unbeknownst to Nasubi was instead of everything just being 
being filmed for a documentary style of sorts. It was, uh, well, live streamed and he became very famous. Number nine is Man vs. Beast. Airing as two specials in January of 2003 and February of 2004, this Fox reality competition show pitted the fastest, strongest, and hungriest and sometimes weirdest people against their animal counterparts. Bits of the show included a hot dog eating competition between a competitive eater and a Kodiak brown bear. Sounds safe. Then there was the tug of war between the sumo wrestler and the orangutan, and of course the obstacle racing track between the Navy SEAL and a chimpanzee. And despite all of that, the winners never even got a prize bigger than, well, bragging rights. That's because the show bombed in viewership and ratings, and animal rights groups heavily criticized the treatment of the animals involved in the competitions. Literally after airing of the second season, the show was cancelled and never saw a third installment. I wonder what animal I'd be up against. Ah, bald eagle. Bald eagle. Beat you to it. Beat you to it before you control me. <laughs> in the comments. And number 10 is Kid Nation. Okay, we live in a world where sometimes adults in important positions make huge mistakes and the consequences hurt many others. Well, apparently CBS was sick of letting adults have all the fun and created the short-lived show Kid Nation. Originally aired between September 19th and December 12th of 2007, this 13-episode reality show took 40 kids between the ages of 8 and 15, placed them in a small private town in New Mexico and allowed them to form their own society with little to no supervision. You can probably guess what happened. After four of the children drank bleach and another burned her face with grease, the show was cancelled. Whew. Oh wait, no, it wasn't, it still continued. Yeah, this proves that you should probably never entrust the safety and good health of your kids to money-hungry television producers. They don't exactly have your best interests in mind, baby. So, those were 10 reality shows that you now probably still can't believe exist. So the question of the day is, would any of you guys do any of the things on these shows for the prize money? And if so, how much money would it take? Leave your comments below because I'll be reading through them and I'm going to pin the best one to the top. But as always, thank you guys so much for coming by today and remember to come back tomorrow at exactly 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because I'll have another video for you. I'll see you then.